Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to Disjunction. And I'm really glad you guys enjoyed the first episode of the series. I know I certainly did. And now we get to go ahead and continue with Frank's infiltration of this facility to find the clues related to Lamar, and hopefully to find that next upgrade kit. So let's go ahead and uh, see what we got here. Looks like we have a guard patrolling... Right here. Excellent. We'll just have a nice little stack. <laughs> Good to go. Oh. Okay, there's the upgrade kit. I pressed E out of instinct and just fired off a little shock probe. Roomba is down. Let's see if we can keep the good vibes here. Ooh. Maybe not. Where are you patrolling? Oh, that's fine. Drag the body. I actually made a <laughs> observation when watching the first episode back. Frank's model, I don't know why, it might be the hair, uh, reminds me of the, the protagonist from Star Tropics. <laughs> like when you're in the dungeons. It's kind of cracked me up a little bit. Except uh, Mike Jones didn't do a whole lot of stealth, if I remember correctly. Looks like we have a security camera feed. Oh. That is actually much larger than I thought it would be. Okay, I think that's like a battery or like an advanced med kit. I don't think that's going to be too much of an issue. Oh! So certain people can actually, if we pick them up, it'll shut down the security camera. That's good to know. Like they're holding the control panel. Um, let's go ahead and check the map. Was there anywhere else that we could go? Nope. Guy with a shotgun. Classic staple. Doing the rounds. Go and just move him over here. Nice dark corner. Okay, we're getting to some heavy occupied areas now. More energy, always a good decision. Got another Roomba. More ammo, but if I'm going to have my way, I don't think I'm going to fire the gun. Ooh. At least, I hope that's kind of how this is going. Malfunctions happen all the time. Sometimes floating Roombas just go bad. Is there a first piece of evidence? If I'm reading these files right, it looks like this lab manufactures some of the compounds needed to synthesize shard. Who the hell owns this place? 
is also mentioned that the lab disposes waste in Brighton Hollow near the flood wall. Might want to check that out. Formerly known as Brighton Beach, Brighton Hollow is a rundown neighborhood in the south of Brooklyn that borders the flood wall. During the 20th century, a large number of Russian and Ukrainian immigrants settled in the area, and it became known for its many Russian-speaking businesses. Though the Russian Mafia always maintained a strong presence in Brighton Beach, crime within the neighborhood steadily rose after it was cut off from New York City's beaches and renamed Brighton Hollow. Now the district is a hotspot for corruption and criminal activities of all kinds. Composed of metal and concrete, the flood wall is a massive barrier designed to safeguard New York City from coastal flooding. The structure was built in response to the imminent threat of rising sea levels due to climate change, and it mitigates the potentially disastrous effects of direct in, um, inundation on the city. That's weird. Uh, completed in 2034, the flood wall protects all of Manhattan and parts of Brooklyn, Queens, and the Bronx. Canals and tunnels honeycomb the wall, allowing for trade and travel beyond city limits. Well, that's cool. At least it's not a, we have completely closed off this section that you can't get through. So it seems actually, you know, like functional, which is good. Okay, we got two guards there. Is that right where we were? Does it just loop around? No, we got this area as well. Okay, took some chin music there. Let's go ahead and... Oh, I don't have the energy to heal. That's unfortunate. Guess we gotta earn that. And it costs four energy to actually utilize the heal. So I wonder who is... Not this guy. So maybe we need to head south. Ooh, here's a checkpoint. That's good. Awesome. Alright, here's where we were before. Looks like there's our next piece of evidence. So that's probably the way out up there that we have to get past. Excerpt from Popular Magazine. As a critique of modern society, the term bioconservative is occasionally used to describe those who are skeptical about technologies that can fundamentally change what it means to be human. Despite what the name may imply, proponents of bioconservatism can be found on either end of the political spectrum. Socially minded bioconservatives argue that radical te technological advancements, particularly those that enhance the human condition, will only serve to widen the already considerable gap between rich and poor as a result of being disproportionately available to the wealthy elite. More traditional bioconservatives, on the other hand, assert that personhood is defined simply by the quality of being human, and that the purity of mankind is something that should be preserved rather than discarded. Regardless of their politics, bioconservatives are unified by their belief that future technologies risk compromising human dignity. Several transhumanist organizations have spoken out against bioconservatism ever since the movement first began to gain traction. Those who label themselves as techno-progressives argue that by trying to suppress technologies capable of transforming the human condition, bioconservatives are effectively denying individuals the freedom to modify their bodies as they see fit. They claim that the bioconservative movement is motivated by emotion rather than reason, and that its supporters fear human augmentation primarily because they have a deep-seated negative response to it. Despite their differences, both moderate bioconservatives and techno-progressives agree that unregulated forms of techno technological advancement can lead to large-scale exploitation and injustice. They oppose systems that could potentially take advantage. So that's kind of cool um, bit of lore. So even if even on both sides of the political spectrum, there are people who, you know, love augments, hate augments, and go, 
all kinds of different ways. Oh, we don't even have enough for our taze. Fortunately, the last piece of evidence is right here. These files contain a detailed list of all the biometric samples that were sent to this lab. Lamont and several other recently arrested Central City leaders listed here. It looks like some of these biometric samples were artificially duplicated. That can't be good. Oh, and that's it. We just vacate as soon as we can. I'd better call Sybil. So do we have the wife of Lamar, Sybil Hubbard, is a grassroots organizer in Central City who manages several of the town's functions. She's blunt in her manner but maintains a reputation for getting things done. A former public interest lawyer, she's one of Central City's most resourceful and outspoken activists. Definitely shows why she wanted Lamar out of uh, jail so fast. Oh, and it's nighttime. This is Sybil. It's Frank. I need to talk to you about what I found last night. Good to hear from you, Frank. What'd you find? You were right. Lama was framed. I found his biometric data in the lab along with others from Central City. The lab had been duplicating it. Someone must have planted it at the crime scene to implicate Lama. Bastards. I knew that clinic was up to something. But why the hell does a nonprofit want to set us up? Who's behind this? I'm not sure. But I also found evidence that the lab manufactures some of the chemicals found in Shad, and that it disposes waste in Brighton Hollow near the flood wall. Shard? Brighton Hollow is Russian turf. Why would this lab be dumping sharp components near the Russians? Eh, I'm not sure. There's no information at the lab about who really owns it. Something doesn't smell right. I have no idea what the Russians or Shard have to do with Lamar, but we need to get to the bottom of this. Brighton Hollow seems like our only lead. Yeah, I investigated Russian mob operations a few years back. I might know where to start looking in Brighton Hollow. You're referring to your history with Zerkov, right? Lamar told me about him and about what he did to you. Frank, try not to get distracted. The priority is freeing Lamar. A lieutenant in the Russian Mafia, Andrei Zerkov is as dangerous as he is cunning. He oversees a number of criminal operations within New York City, including drug dealing, arms smuggling, and human trafficking. He's an exceptionally ruthless man, having burned Frank's eyes out with acid back when Frank worked as a detective for the NYPD. Oh. Sure. I'll do that. Thank you, Frank. What you found out about Lamar might be enough to get him off, but we still don't know why any of this happened. If the Russians and Shard are involved, this might be bigger than we think. I really appreciate your help. Get some rest before you head back out. Sure, Sib. I'll call you if I find anything. <laughs> okay, are we going to get some sleep? We're going to have a flashback to when uh, Frank lost his eyes. Because that would be kind of creepy. November 20th, 2048. The Bronx. Are we going to switch characters? This is Elaine Chen with your evening news broadcast. Police investigations continue following the dramatic break-in at the artificial intelligence laboratories of Millennium Industries by self-described humanist organization Humanity Today. A splinter group of the organization, led by radical leader John Mason, reportedly blasted its way into the lab using high-yield explosives, then destroyed millions of dollars worth of technology. The prominent technology corporation Millennium Industries is the leading American company in artificial intelligence research, so it's Cyberdyne. Though it develops and manufactures a number of different products, Millennium Industries specializes in advanced cybernetics, industrial robotics, and artificial neural networks. The company's groundbreaking work in artificial intelligence has made it the target of several protest groups, including Humanity Today. 
Known for its controversial methods, Humanity Today is a nationwide movement that condemns all research into artificial intelligence and human augmentation. The group advocates for the purity of mankind, believing that radical technological advances capable of rendering unmodified humans obsolete are a dangerous threat to the social order. Though most of the group is involved only in peaceful protest, its more militant members occasionally use violence to accompany their goals. Recently, Humanity Today has been linked to the destruction of a major research laboratory owned by Millennium Industries. The head of an extremist cell within Humanity Today, John Mason is a militant fanatic known for his hard stance against the development of intelligence artificial systems. He has been involved in a number of attacks on corporations specializing in machine intelligence, and he is labeled a dangerous terrorist by the federal government. His current whereabouts are unknown. A citywide manhunt is underway to up apprehend John Mason and his followers within Humanity Today. Questions remain about how the group managed to coordinate such an attack and escape without a trace. In the wake of the attack, Mayor Montgomery is facing increased pressure to sign the controversial bill allowing defense contractor Bishop Cross to deploy security personnel in New York to support the struggling NYPD. Supporters of the bill argue it will help keep everyday New Yorkers safe during this period of increased violence and uncertainty. I have a feeling that'll make things worse. Just shot in the dark. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce the fighters for tonight's event. To my left, the kicks boxer with two mechanical legs weighing 234 pounds. You know him, you love him. George Cleaver Cleveland. And to my right, the man with an iron jaw, arm, and heart. The brawler from the Bronx, weighing 265 pounds. Joe Lockjaw Murphy. As usual, make sure you've placed your bets at the bar because the fight starts now. <clears throat> All right, uh, show's over, folks. No refunds. What the fuck, Joe? Joe don't play around. He's not getting paid by the hour. Yeah, how you holding up, Joe? Fine. I'm glad to hear it. Another drink? Make it two. Sure. By the way, I think Ray wanted to see you in his office when you have a minute. Say nothing. So here's our heavy. <laughs> so, um, what we saw... Um, with Frank was the demo, so we are completely in uh, uncharted territory here, as far as I'm concerned. Anyone to talk to? No. Hey, Lockjaw, you almost killed George out there. Poor guy will be lucky if he can ever eat solid food again. Man, a few words is Joe. Listen, I heard about what happened to your daughter. Losing the kid ain't easy. Take it from me. But I can't risk you scaring off the competition, alright? Get yourself a punching bag that don't cost money. You pay me to fight, so I fight. I pay you to entertain the crowd and make them bet their money away. I don't pay you to smash George's head to dust with a 30-pound metal fist. Take a vacation, Joe. Come back after you got yourself together. I don't need this shit. I quit. You can't quit because I'm firing you. Get your sorry ass out of my office. Ray, if you open your mouth again, I'll crush your fucking skull. Uh, alright, alright. Just relax. You're unhinged, Joe. Get a massage or something. Just calm yourself down. Eat shit, Ray. Joe, mind if I talk to you for a minute? Refill my glass and then we can talk. Yeah, you got it. Listen, I know you're going through hell, but it won't do any good to rot away in this place. The answers you're looking for aren't at the bottom of that glass. I don't even know what questions I need answered. 
Well, from what I understand, there's a lot of unanswered questions. Maria was part of humanity today, wasn't she? What do you know about what happened to her? <sighs> Not much. The cops took one look at my record at the station and told me to fuck off. All they said was that her body was found in the East River with alcohol in her system. Cops could be lying, or maybe they're just not seeing the whole picture. You don't need the police, Joe, especially not the ones this city has to offer. You know as well as I do that something here doesn't add up. Her death happening only a day after Humanity Today's break-in can't just be a coincidence. What do you want from me? Well, for your own sake, I want you to find out what happened to her. You'll never feel whole again until you do. It's up to you to decide what happens after that. Look, Curtis, I appreciate that you give a shit, but what am I supposed to do? From where I'm standing, there doesn't seem to be much to go on. Well, the news said that a splinter group of humanity today blew its way into the Millennium Industries building using high-yield explosives. Even diehards like them couldn't have cooked up something like that on their own. They must have bought it from a specialist. Someone local. You're clever for a barman, Curtis. I wasn't always a barman, Joe. So, know anyone who might have sold them some explosives? He's kind of like Shepard Book from Firefly. <clears throat> There's a gun runner I used to know named Lorenzo who specializes in bombs. If Humanity Today bought their stuff locally, there's a chance he might have heard about it. Isn't Lorenzo the one who set you up? A notorious arms dealer, Diego Lorenzo is known for his ability to quickly smuggle goods from one place to another. His operation runs smoothly and efficiently, and he sells his merchandise to anyone who can afford his services. He's an old acquaintance of Joe's who once betrayed his trust and sold him out to the police, leading to Joe's arrest and incarceration. Joe says nothing. Right. Lorenzo is worth following up on, even if he is two-faced. Do you know where to find him? He has a warehouse in the Bronx where he stores a lot of his old smuggled contraband. I'm sure he and his thugs will be there. Well, I think you should pay him a visit. I take it he's not going to invite you when you show up. Take it easy, Joe. Grief can make a man do things he'll regret. Try to keep a cool head. See you around, Curtis. Oh, can we just punch people now? Because that'd be kind of fun. Sorry. Oh, we can just talk to this guy. Oh, uh, you look clever. Got a minute? Share a drink and remember what matters? Sure. Nobody ever talks about 33, man. Nobody. They're missing all the crucial bits of the story when they overlook it. Know what I mean? It's like all the writing was on the wall, but everyone was too blind to notice. Call it hubris, call it whatever you want. I was shooting straight to the top back then, and I was no better, but I see now, man. I see. It's a real damn clear if you just look at what's in plain sight. We were at war in 33. Sure were. Caspian War? Hell of a mess. Just helps it all along, you know? The war machine never really shuts off. It's our disease. Burned into the heart of this goddamn place. Gotta make that money, man. When we run out of enemies over there, we make up new ones over here to scare off the masses and sell war bonds and dream up new weapons. Nobody cares, though. They just want their blinders and their slice of happiness. <laughs> that was me in 33. Caspian War... In escalation of the Iran-Saudi Arabia Cold War, the Caspian War was a protracted armed conflict that lasted from 2031 to 2040. It began as a series of violent encounters between Iran-backed forces and Saudi Arabian affiliates who contested buffer territory separating those nations, but it eventually grew to include several major powers. While the United States backed Saudi Arabia in exchange for superior oil contracts and the possibility of securing Iran's oil fields, Russia sounded, sided with Iran due to their long-standing geopolitical ties. The resulting proxy war between the United States and Russia took a considerable toll on both nations, and many resources were lost in the fighting. By the end of the conflict, 
neither side emerged truly victorious. So it was a new Vietnam, essentially. Yeah. And who were you? They called me Reddish back then, on account of the hair and the tie. Real well-known in money circles. It all went up in smoke after the collapse. That's my whole point. The collapse. We are all too stupid and too rich to stop and smell the roses. I see, it couldn't last. Fifty years of war profiteering. Fifty goddamn years. A global financial crisis that began in 2039, the collapse was a period of severe economic depression that had a profound, pro profound impact on the citizens of the world. Caused by a combination of resource starvation and economic uncertainty, the collapse led to a dramatic reduction in personal income, tax revenue, and international trade. American cities were hit the hardest by the disaster, and unemployment r rates rose to 23% during its peak. Though the United States has mostly recovered from the collapse, its lingering effects can still be observed to this day in areas of the country rife with economic turmoil. Let's go ahead and say nothing here. We didn't learn a thing. We never learned a thing. It's the human condition, I'm sure of it. We're all evolved and we're grafting machines to ourselves and we have these big ideas, but nothing actually improves. You call this shit advancement? We're in a hamster wheel, all of us at once. You either keep running and try to set the pace, or you trip and get fucked by 10 billion other people all at once. Don't let your legs give out. Keep an eye on the walls. There's always writing on the wall. Cracks everywhere. It's a fucking mess. We're just gonna leave the man to his drink. Alright, anyone else that we can actually talk to here? Before we go try and pay a vi visit to our old friend Lorenzo. So, oh, it doesn't look like we can actually do any, like, punching or anything in here. This is a non-combat zone. I'm gonna have to have something to drink next to me when I'm... Oh. Monorail! From Ray's Bar to Lorenzo's Warehouse. I need to remember, I need to <laughs> uh, memorize that song from The Simpsons. Whenever we do a transition. Okay, find Lorenzo. Find the upgrade kit on the second floor. So... What does... Press left mouse button to perform a non-lethal melee attack. And press right mouse button to perform a le... Okay. So he is all about the punching. Doesn't really seem his style, but maybe you want to pay Lorenzo a surprise visit. Your passive ability is Dermal Plating. This ability allows you to endure considerable punishment, providing 10 additional health points that regenerate over 10 seconds. I love that. That's a very satisfying thunk when he punches someone. Let's see what we can do about getting to a checkpoint. Yeah, this is definitely a warehouse. Look at the trucks and everything. Whoa. Your first active ability is charge. This ability allows you to dash toward your crosshair, dealing 15 points of non-lethal damage to all enemies in your path and stunning them for one second. Press E to activate charge. Choo-choo. Okay. Need to do it, like, right when we get into their sight line. Because we just left a nice blood spray there on the floor, and I'm here for it. Your second ability is Force Grenade. This ability allows you to throw a grenade toward your crosshair, dealing 40 points of non-lethal damage to all enemies caught within the blast. Okay, so we have a much more potent grenade now. Whoa. I'm a big fan of that. Your, th oh, your third active ability is Combat Stim. Allows you to bolster your strength, increase the damage of your cybernetic arm by 10 for 10 seconds. Okay. 
and down. So we basically get an enrage. Uh oh, <laughs> we messed up the box. But what we didn't mess up is the checkpoint. And this is a perfect place to call it, guys. So now we have a brand new character. And uh, looks like we're going to put all of these cybernetics to good use. We've seen cybernetic eyes, and now we've got a cybernetic jaw and a cybernetic arm. So I hope you guys are enjoying the series. If you liked the episode, please leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. That'd be a big help. And we'll see you next time. Later dates, everyone.